Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 64, and these are the games our diggers have for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. Now before we begin, we actually have another failed team dig. This time, DOS games backslash arcade2 backslash gwar240, dug up by Martin Hirschberg and Jonathan Lohr. And this one failed for a reason which I'm hoping I can rectify in the future. Batch file to execute Global War? Okay, so apparently a game called Global War. Um, ooh, this might be BBS software, which means running it might be a little tricky. Hmm. Yeah, this is probably not going to be easy to set up. Like, I mean, BBS software runs very differently compared to your typical software. Because DOS, um, DOS does the whole terminate and stay resident thing. And a lot of BBS software takes advantage of that aspect. And so it's monitoring COM ports and stuff, and it's got its interrupt set up. And yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to run this properly. I'm going to put it in as a failed dig for now, but if anyone has any advice on setting this stuff up so that I can actually test it out, feel free to let me know. Unfortunately, though, Jonathan Lore only sent in the one dig, so I don't have anything else to show from him, so let's just go to Matan Hirschberg's next dig, which is DOS games backslash arcade backslash aliens 2. I've got a funny feeling this is not related to the Aliens franchise, but... I'm going to find out in a second. Aliens. Alien Attack by Martin Software Productions. Copyright 93, Eldon Martin. May be distributed on a non-commercial basis. So probably freeware. Um, oh, it went on on its own. I didn't press anything. You are the only one left to defend the planet. Use the arrow keys or J and L to move your gun. Spacebar to shoot aliens. J and L seems kind of weird, but I guess that kind of works. Um... G to toggle gun. And it moved on on its own again. This game is like... I hate it when games do that. It's like, let me push a key to continue. Don't do it automatically. Although that's that's weird. It supports the Gravis gamepad. I don't see that often. Um, although apparently mouse controls, so let's go mouse. Enter starting speed. Uh, zero? Okay, um... Okay, there it goes. So, that's weird. The game actually started with CGA graphics, but now we're in text mode. Huh. You know, this kind of reminds me of round... round 42. Sort of. Although round 42 is way better than this. So what's going on is that I've got a little gun at the bottom. And pressing the mouse button, or just holding it down really, lets me shoot up to one shot at a time. And we've got these alien things descending the screen. And the other thing too is, whenever I move the gun, it also moves the shot on screen. So it's kind of like the, um... Up and those aliens got me. Now part of the top ten Hall of Champions. So you only got one life. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I guess play again. It actually kind of reminds me of um, Astro Blast as well. At least I think it's called Astro Blast. It's a game that was seen on the ColecoVision and I think the Intellivision as well. And it's basically a game where you just shoot stuff with a gun at the bottom of the screen that's coming down. It's like asteroids and stuff. And the idea is that you would think that because it's of the nature of the game that you could just play it however you want, but the thing is that every time an asteroid hits the ground, you lose points. So the only way to actually do well at the game is to actually continually shoot stuff. And it has some other di interesting difficulties and stuff too. Yeah, G gun mode doesn't appear to be anything. <laughs> so, oh well. So... Yeah, this is, um, Alien Attack, I think this is what it was called. It's, it works, but it's pretty mindless. 
Our next dig is DOS games backslash sports backslash bass stuff. And that one comes from Matthew Belshin. Part of me wants to think basic stuff, except it, it's in the sports folder. So it almost makes me think like bass, like fish baths or something like that. Yeah, because like it says bass map, bass tips, B tips, hmm. R tot. Why is there an exe that says R tot? I guess there's a lot of exes here. Uh. What do I even run? Maybe if I just run one, it'll tell me to, like, run a specific one. No. EGA Fish Map version 1.0 by Nels Anderson. That name rings a bell, Nels Anderson. Right, this is the same guy who did um, EGA Trek and that shooting gallery game that I covered on Ancient DOS games. But the question is, what file do I even run to play this? <laughs> uh... Maybe bass tips? Oh, well, we got something here. Bass fishing tip of the day, number 15. Never possible, avoid netting your fish. The net can cause serious damage to the tail and fins and remove some of the slime coat. Either of these leaves the fish susceptible to fungus, which can be fatal. Instead, try to grab the lower lip of the bass ge and gently lift it from the water. Most bass tournaments do not allow the use of nets for this reason. So, this is just a thing to give tips on... Wow, there's over a hundred tips here? Jeez. An editor for bass tips. Well, this thing says copyright Richard Olson. So is there like multiple programs in this directory? Because we've seen that happen before in this shareware game, c CD. Okay, I think I might have figured something out here. I think. See, if we're looking at the main sports folder here, We'll see that there's a Bass 42, a Bass MP12, and then the Bass stuff folder that we were in. Now, if we go to Bass 42, oops, type it in right. This actually looks, because you see there's a map.trn file there. Whereas if we go back to the Bass stuff folder, and we do the Bass map thing, we're going to see right here map.tur not found in current directory. So it kind of looks like the Bass Stuff folder is actually supposed to be a compa companion software to whatever this is. Or, sorry, I gotta... So whatever this is. So, I'm guessing this is the actual game, so I guess we'll try this out. Detected VGA graphics adapter. Bass Tour by Dick Olson, version 4.2. Uh, different areas available to fish. Enjoy, please register with $10. So why is this Richard Olson and the other one is um, Nels Anderson? Maybe Nels Anderson wrote, like, companion utilities for this thing or something? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's fish Crystal Lake. Four play modes. I am definitely a novice. Enter your name. Sure. Like to use a mouse? Sure. Maybe I should turn the cycles back up. Oh, here we go. Uh, this looks pretty neat, actually. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, six hours... Uh, something, I don't know. Uh, 20 gallons of gas, 100% battery. Okay, uh, I'm guessing that's me. Just from the fact that the flag's there and that's vaguely boat shaped. You need to start the outboard, lower the trolling motor, or use the paddle before you can move the boat. Wow, so you're literally gonna simulate. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, I was about to say, you're literally gonna simulate having to turn the engine on, but it's literally trying to simulate every individual aspect of fishing. That's a little excessive, right? Oh, you can't even use these keys while this thing is up. You have to close it first. Okay. Outboard is off. Trolling motor is down. Trolling motor is now up and locked. Okay, so you not only have to lower the motor, but you have to turn it on. Wow. Okay, um... Where is the button to turn on the motor? Alt F9. Hey boy.
Wait, I thought I put the motor down. I thought I put it down. What? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what? I just received a citation for what? I don't know what's going on here. Okay, let's, um... Okay, that apparently turned the engine off for whatever reason. Um, let's actually try to fish, I guess. Uh... Live well F3, select a rod F9, so I guess F9. These controls are really, really unintuitive. To bring up that list of commands, you have to use the left mouse button, and then to close the list of commands, you have to use the right mouse button. It's, it's weird. Um, which rod should I use? I don't know. Let's choose to this one. And now I gotta figure out tackle box, I guess, so F10. Oh, you can actually click on those. Okay, that makes things a little easier. Um, tackle box has six drawers. <laughs> wow, there is so much stuff here. I just want to fish. Jeez. Uh, wow. <laughs> Look at the... N this is just the... This is just a plastic worms selection. Look at them all. This is like 20 of them. Actually, let me count. Oh, wow, I actually got that right on. It's literally 20 of them. <laughs> or maybe 21. I don't I don't know if I counted the purple one or not. But still, it's just literally 20 of them. Uh, I don't know, the Sidewinder? You <laughs> Choosing the color? This... <laughs> There's a lot to this. Um, if if I sound if I sound weird about this, it's is that I'm overwhelmed. There's so many options here. It's like how am I supposed to even how am I supposed to even have a clue what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, who? So I guess maybe start casting, or do I need bait first? Or I don't know. Well, let's just do start casting. Okay, so each time I cast, a minute goes by. Well, I'm clearly doing something wrong, because I'm not catching any fish. You have to manually scroll the map. Okay, and here's a big problem. It says to use shift in the arrow keys. That doesn't work so well, for some reason. Okay, so I've been recording for over 15 minutes now. This game here, I don't really... I don't really know what to make of it. Like, it's a game, it looks interesting, but there's so many things you can do that it's just overwhelming to know, like, what I should be doing, even. Not to mention the message boxes pop up and disappear so quickly that I don't have time to read them. And again, I don't have the cycle set that high. So, yeah. I'm guessing this game might appeal to people who are interested in fishing, but at the same time, it's there's so much like information overload, and I don't know how much of it is like relevant to actual fishing. Like, I mean, if I actually take a look at the tackle box here and like just pull up one of these lists here. Actually, that was a bad example. Yeah, like, I mean, you have all these different names of these different... these different lures you could have. It's like, which one... like, are these real? Or are these just sort of descriptions for different ones that don't really mean anything? Or do they mean something to, compared to this game? And then when you pick one, it's like, well, now you gotta pick a color, and it's like, does the color even matter to anything? And I just noticed it's different colors for each and for each one too. So it's like, <laughs> what do you, the the game is basically comes down to information overload, and I don't really know what to do because there's so many options. But 
I guess if this is if fishing games are your thing, then this looks like there might be a lot to it. So probably worth checking out if that's kind of your kind of thing. But for me, I just I just don't know what to do. And our last dig for today from Captain Crazy Hat is Wind Games backslash Unclassified backslash Gatling. Probably some kind of game that has to do with Gatling guns. I'm just guessing. Um, we got a doc file. I don't have Windows 3.1 set to read doc files, although it might not be a real doc file, so let's just load up, um, where is it? Oh, what am I looking for again? <laughs> I am looking for Notepad. And then we'll just drag and drop. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oftentimes this kind of stuff isn't actually a doc file, they just put dot doc as the extension because they want it to mean document. Anyways, um, Gatling Machine Gun Screen Blaster for Microsoft Windows, version 2.01, dated 10791 by Scott Gourley. Thank you for trying Gatling, thanks to version suggestions program which periodically shoots a spray of bullets across your computer screen, leaving a trail of bullet holes in your windows. Remain on the screen until the windows are refreshed by Windows itself. So... Huh. So basically the program is just something really stupid to <laughs> change the way the screen is drawn. <laughs> At least it's freeware. If somebody was trying to charge money for this, I'd be really just really mad. Okay, let's see what it does. Oh, uh, Gatling is running now. Timer interval. Let's actually change it to like 10 seconds just so we can see it happen more often. So after 10 seconds, it should shoot some bullets, I'm guessing. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, and here's the here's the real annoying part. When that hap when the effect happens, everything freezes. So not only is it a program that's totally pointless because it just screws up what you're looking at on your screen, but when it happens, yeah, you can't do anything. So that's that's a surprisingly annoying program. <laughs> Actually, a lot of these, like, background apps that do these kinds of things are pretty annoying. So, well, I just changed the bullet hole size. Let's see what the big caliber is like. Well, I'm gonna find... There it goes. So it's just bigger circles. And what about the small caliber? Yep, there it goes. So did anybody have... Just a silly question to put out there. Does anybody actually like these kinds of programs that do these stupid effects on the Windows desktop? Like, does anyone actually, like, run their computer having one of these things going just on a normal basis? I can't imagine anyone would find this even remotely useful. <laughs> or not annoying, I should say. How about this? Let's go for a time interval of one. So now we're just going to have bullets going constantly. And you know, it just occurred to me that by setting it that fast, I'm probably barely going to be able to do anything. Yeah, it's, um, I'm trying to move the window, but it's not having any of it. Okay, so now that I've totally screwed up windows here, <laughs> that's Gatling. One of the most useless pointless programs I've ever run across that makes it very difficult to use your computer properly. But at least they're not trying to charge money for it.